Hey there! New event, new video, new commentary. And in this one, I'm again yeah, flying red side well, because of the numbers. Um, when I joined on the server, um, there were about 10 people on the red side and 25 on, on the blue side, so there was really no point in going blue. Um, this is the Blitz over Southampton event, uh, flown at the end of April. And it's basically um, a twist of the old uh, Kanalkampf uh, map on ATAC. And I'm here in the Spitfire Mark 1A 100 octane, um, which was one of the aircraft available on uh, the red side. Um, the others were the Hurricane 1, Rotol 100 octane, and Bowfighter 1F. And uh, the Germans, uh, the Germans, uh, got uh, the E3 and the E4 models of the BF109. Uh, no E4Ns, no Spitfire Mark IIs, which I very much like. Because every time those models are available, um, everybody seems to be flying only these two models and nothing else. So that's good change from the ordinary and I'm here on the very western border of the map just following what tab 71 tells me in regards to radar contacts and sure enough there is a German aircraft ahead of me it's a Junkers 88 a medium bomber and few people seem to realize but the Junkers 88 is a very fast aircraft in a dive you can actually now dive hurricanes pretty easily with this thing and even the Spitfires have the work cut out for them um, trying to run this thing down. Of course once you um, hit the deck then it's gonna be just a, a matter of time until you catch the Junkers 88 but as long as this aircraft has some altitude and gets to uh, turn it into speed in a dive then it's going to be very very fast and you can see um, I'm here going very fast the aircraft is shaking and I'm lining up or for a shot here from his low six and I'm slowly gaining on this not very quickly I said the Junkers is very fast and the gunner is about to sh open up on me like, uh, in a second or two. Yeah, there we go. And I have no idea what happened there because from the traces it looked like the return fire went past me. But something must have hit me and the other odd thing is that I didn't get any damage message on the top left. Uh, because any aircraft damages are usually shown in the chat box. Oh dear. Engine is still running at full RPM and is delivering full 12 pounds of boost. Um, but yeah, the, the rear gunner of the Junker 88 effectively turned my <laughs> Spitfire into a washing machine in tumbler mode. Still doing very well in terms of speed. And after receiving this hit, I'm being a little bit more cautious there. The 110s um, yeah, flown mostly by OBT squadron. And there was a large 110 raid heading for various targets, one of which is Southampton Docks, which is somewhere off to 12 to 1 o'clock. And yeah, unfortunately, I didn't see those 110s, I just stumbled onto this single. Junkers 88, which I am hellbent on catching. And I score well, several I hits that here. That and eventually well, he's going, oh, in. Is going in. I don't even know, know if that was due to Kill. my gunfire. Uh, I guess the AAA <coughs> did most of the damage. The 110s the have already reached the targets, dropped the bombs, and are even on the way out, so that's. 
It's more like uh, Southampton. Actually. Pretty much mission accomplished for them, unfortunately. And it's at this point that I decide I don't want to fly with this shaking. Um, so eventually give up the chase <coughs> and head for the nearest airfield uh, to put my aircraft down and get a new one. As you can see, we're now flying uh, at low altitudes over Southampton. Uh, Snapper, I think we have a bandit and, and there is an airfield uh, pretty much nearby. There's some other friendlies uh, yeah, going in for the chase. There's a 109 in front of me. <coughs> and some friendlies off to my, uh, my right side. Uh, the one tens will have to deal with RAF fighters pretty much on the entire flight home. Yeah, just, they're just um, fly, uh, flying along the So they're slowly getting whittled down. Of course, they have already um, done their job. So, yeah. so there's the film I will be putting down here. And at last second, I spot a friendly who is getting attacked by a 109. That's the friendly. And a 109 diving in behind me. I, I do is, call this uh, out on Team Speak. On the deck, you've got a long six. So if that person was on Team Speak, he should be aware of the fact that the 109 is currently yeah. Whoever just hit coming deck, in on hot on his six. So for my second sortie I quickly took off again at West Hampton in a Spitfire Mark 1A 100 Octane, the same model as before, and didn't even bother getting up to any uh, substantial altitude because I was looking for the remnants of the BF-110 raid, which were bound to be still somewhere around the Isle of Wight, currently heading basically south here. Um, keeping my eyes on the horizon, having a look for any 110s and the escorts. They are dead with snipers. And there in front of me you can see a whole gang of 110s. There's one um, Spitfire uh, bravely charging into that flock of 110s. Um, one already basically turned into a glider. I didn't want to take my chances with this half dozen of 110s. And then I saw here a 109 and a Spitfire engaged in air combat, decided to um, get into that fight. So you can see the, the 109 is on the defense right now, Spitfire is on his tail. Well, I'm trying to get the Spitfire to overshoot. And a 109 pilot is actually doing a pretty good job at it. Spitfire hasn't hit, done any serious damage for now. Then he gets into a spin, which is pretty fatal. And I take a shot here, and as I, he was at a very uh, good angle for me, I could set his. Uh, fuel tank on fire, then no problem. Uh, the thing on, to keep in mind with 109s um, in Cliffs of Dover is uh, that they have an armored bulkhead, 
in the tail, uh, just behind the fuel tank. So firing um, at 109s from the dead at 6 o'clock is not um, very effective. You want to hit them either in the belly or from above or from the sides. Any kind of off angle dramatically increases your chances of setting the fuel tank on fire because it bypasses the um, the armored bulkhead. And there I see a single contact, a 109. Not sure what he was up to. I decided to turn around and engage him. Somehow he did not manage to spot me. And he was completely unaware. He already has a fuel leak. And I just uh, turn over, get in behind him. Ready to fire at him. I score several hits on his tail, but nothing that looked too traumatic. But as you can see here, he's going right in. I don't know what happened there. Maybe I got lucky and shot out his elevator controls and that made him slam into the water. Uh, it's hard to tell. It didn't look like much to me at the time. But a kill is a kill. I'll take it. But um, speaking again of the fuel tank and all nines, um, yeah, as I said, if you can shoot at a 109 in a deflection angle, then take the chance because from that six, as I said, it's not very um, effective. Nine aircraft here, south. Deflection shooting in a Spitfire and Hurricane definitely pays off. And then. Uh, a couple of minutes later I spot here a Spitfire being attacked by some 110s and 109s and I decide to go in and try and help this guy. Yeah, buddy, yeah, I tried that. <laughs> uh, one more time, then. Or maybe that's what the snipers say. I don't know. Some kind of Spitfire venting, attacking a 110 south of Sony Island. Oh, whenever you see such a furball, it's usually pretty easy to surprise people because they normally only have eyes for the uh, the enemies they're already engaged uh, with um, so you stand a very good chance to actually get in a good shot at somebody and as always also uh, in the Spitfire and Hurricanes you should try to keep your speed up because it makes it less vulnerable if more enemies join the fight Never just throw your energy away um, pointlessly. I tried to surprise this 109, but he must have seen me at the last second. I tried to get in a deflection shot. I missed him there by uh, a mere meter or so. Didn't score any hits, unfortunately. 109 dives away, decides to call it a day. I didn't follow him there. I'm now on the lookout for the Spitfire, which I can't see um, because that one was still engaged with a 110 somewhere and I do manage to spot the 110 eventually engine temperature is still looking good uh, you have to keep in mind the Maximum allowed temperature of the water radiator is 125 degrees. And, um, yeah. Uh, if you're running full boost, 12, pound, uh, 12 pounds of boost pressure, and you engage in a low and slow uh, turn fight, the engine temperatures will rise pretty quickly. Or if you try to 
out climb somebody at full boost and engine RPM. So always keep an eye on that. If you're in a high speed chase, uh, keeping your speeds high, you normally don't run into the situation that your engine overheats at full boost. And there I can see the uh, 110 up in front of me. He's fairly fast, so I decided to dip my nose down. Also, um, I'm also dipping below the 110's horizon because of the tail gunner. Because the tail gunner cannot shoot you when you're below the tail of the 110, obviously. Because of the limited um, firing arc. And the Spitfire is very fast on deck with 12 pounds of boost. And I should have no issue running down this 110. I'm guessing it's just the ones that have spawned in and then people have just left them. There's about 14 I counted. Yeah, I got. I could say 9 here right now. One of them's upside down. What? <laughs> 110 is maneuvering, uh, probably trying to see who's behind him because the tail gunner will call out um, enemies within a certain distance to the aircraft. So he's probably just wondering where the enemy his tail gunner is calling out is. Probably didn't see me yet because he's just flying around very casually, about to uh, shoot him in his belly. Rear gunner is opening up, but he's got no um, line of fire there. I venture into the line of fire of the tail gunner, but um, fortunately don't take any hits. The one tail, uh, one ten tail gunners are pretty efficient, so you shouldn't just settle in on a one ten six if you can avoid that. Left engine is already leaking coolant. Uh, the 110 is a very durable aircraft, can take a lot of hits. It's got two uh, fuel leaks now. Coming in from above again, also with, as with the 109s, um, uh, you're best off shooting the fuel tanks at a um, perpendicular angle, not because of some kind of armor on the 110, but um, it's just the rounds have a much easier time getting through the thin aircraft skin when you're firing in a perpendicular angle onto the, on the wings. Firing from dead six is always um, the least efficient way of spending your 303 machine gun fire. And as I'm low on ammunition there, I decided to break off and land on the Isle of Wight and take a new aircraft from there. R seven one two three. That's your Spitfire. Uh, it's crawling just all over the airfield in circles. Somehow. It's a self-driving Spitfire manufactured by Tesla. <laughs> Me. I was engaged by that bloody focus. <laughs> I should, I should shoot it. I should kill it. You should. <laughs> you really should, because you guys, they're gonna, it's gonna shoot you guys as you're taking off. And in my third sortie of the day, I'm again in a Spitfire Mark 1A. Um, I was patrolling the area around the eastern tip of the Isle of Wight, just south of Portsmouth Harbour, uh, looking for 
one of nines, one tens, uh, or some other uh, beefier targets like Junkers 88s, Heinkels, and looking towards Portsmouth Harbour, I actually spot um, a friendly and a one of nine in combat, so I turn around to engage this as well. These operators I just got uh, dragged them back almost. I see a 1 on 9 and Spitfire dogfighting over Portsmouth. So currently, as you can see, the 1 on 9 is is in a better position. He's got the uh, a slow, a slight altitude of advantage. Um, yeah, my frame rate just dropped off the Celsius build. He's trying okay. to he's zoom back up and doesn't see me there, although I passed very close by. And just now notices me. I get in a few fleeting shots on his tail. And he decides to dive away, but. Um, Against a Mark 1A with rotor propeller diving away is not that efficient. It is very much efficient against the Mark 1, which we had in the last video, with the uh, variable prop pitch because of the the limited uh, pitch range that it has. And we can actually wreck your engine if you dive it too steeply. And 109 seems to realize that he can't outrun uh, us two and he starts to maneuver and he's actually doing a fairly good job. Score some more hits on the tail, nothing too critical, didn't set any control surfaces on fire, pulled a little too hard here, made the aircraft um, do a full roll. Fortunately not a flat spin of any sort. Uh, now the other Spitfire is on, hot on his tail, 1-9 goes defensive again. And I've got a lot of smash here. I'm just climbing away from him, but he decides to take a shot at me here. Almost lands a hit. That was some good shooting by him. But his luck is about to run out here. Let's go some more hits. And there again, fuel tank fire. Uh, you could see that the angle that I fired at him was pretty much perpendicular uh, to his fuselage, so completely bypassing the armored bulkhead. And that, that's the kind of shots you want to take from the side, or even just a smaller off angle like uh, 30 or 45 degrees. That will help lots and lots with setting 109s on fire. Fighters 150 for 4, east of Isle of Wight. Roger that. Just at the eastern tip here, I see two contacts to the. I see several contacts, like half a dozen here. South, east of the Isle of Wight. Maybe uh, less than 10 miles out. Roger. Heading that way. If you look in the yeah, direction of the moon, you should see them. Yeah, I'm ditching and I can say 2110 stop site. Hello, everybody. Prom here. Looks like the uh, old days of the server. Ooh, I see a U88 here on the deck here. trying to. And they are looking over my shoulder. I see a Junkers 88. 
uh, hugging the deck basically and I decide there not to turn directly towards him but instead I wanna go for a head-on attack with any bomber that is basically the preferred my preferred way of approaching I always try to get ahead of the bomber turn around and then go f go for a straight head-on attack because those are usually the deadliest because you're always bound to hit something uh, vital either the engines or the crew in the cockpit there's actually and there's actually several Yugos 88 so that uh, must have been point. Um, some sort of AI formation that was called in via the mission uh, tab. I didn't see, I only saw one uh, person uh, flying the Junkers 88 at the time. This 88 is already only flying on one engine. It's gonna have a hard time pilots. getting back home. Well, one of them is flying on one engine. I'm trying to wiggle that down. Snapper approaching from the north. <laughs> Two more Spitfires joining. Uh, you could see me there shooting at the left inner wing because I'm trying to uh, set the fuel tanks on fire. You should always try to aim for something uh, vital. There's somebody else set him on fire. There's another one in front of it. Okay. Going for him. Okay, I'll hold off and come in up behind. Oh, there's a 109 here. And there you can see a 109 just uh, slot in behind me. I turn around, break off from the Junkers 88. The 109 goes back up. I don't know. Uh, it does not decide to stick around. Instead, focuses uh, his attention on somebody else here. Um, Oh, there's several, there's two one on the, on the Spitfires one engaging the Yunkers 88, so I turn around and try to shoot one of the 109s, oh, no, but at this here. point I'm very low on ammunition, I just don't realize time. how six, 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 low on ammunition. Six, six, I basically have just one tiny squirt left in my machine guns. And I take deflection, I shoot, I only have, um, yeah, I had ammo out. left in my left machine guns and I just scored one visible hit with the de-wild um, ammunition shot, just one spark of the wild. and that's me Winchester and I just decide to call it a day return to the Isle of Wight for a landing a uh, de-wild round basically being the uh, incendiary round on the 3 of 3 machine guns um, uh, that's actually the incorrect term, but it's actually the Dixon round because D. Wilde was a Belgian inventor of this type of ammunition, but his round was not in, uh, accepted into service. And instead, um, someone by the name of Dixon actually invented an improved version of the design, which eventually ended up in service. And this is basically a ball type round with an incendiary filling um, which is only activated um, basically on impact which is different to other normal ordinary uh, incendiary rounds found on both the uh, 303 machine guns as well as the German MG17s and 15s. A German um, incendiary round basically has just an phosphorus, uh, white phosphorus filler, which is sealed off and when the round is shot off 
the ceiling actually melts away and releases the phosphorus uh, very slowly, which results also in a uh, smoke trail. Uh, this is not the case of the Dixon round. So for my fourth sortie, I finally took a hurricane um, and few people these days actually take the hurricane although um, it's actually a very fine aircraft. Um, I mean looking at the raw stats like speed and climb rate it is inferior to the Spitfire and people only seem to focus on that but the hurricane actually has some very nice um, soft stat advantages versus the Spitfire. Um, basically, uh, by the way, I'm here heading west uh, over the Isle of Wight because tab 71 is telling me that there's something in this area and then I'm, I'm about to bounce a 109 here and while this fight ensues I'm going to talk about the soft stat advantages of the Hurricane. So for one, uh, the Hurricane is a much better gun platform. It's more stable um, than the Spitfire. It has better control harmonization on the Spitfire. The, um, the aileron and the elevator pitch sensitivities are not very well harmonized. The elevator is much more uh, sensitive than the ailerons, uh, for example. And the Hurricane the controls are much more harmonized. Um, meaning that the aircraft is much more, uh, much easier to fly and um, the guns on Hurricane are also much better um, placed on the wing. On the Spitfire they basically spread out over the entirety of the wing. Um, you have two uh, machine guns in the mid wing, you have one near the inner, uh, inner wing section and one near uh, the edge of the wing. Um, whereas on Hurricane they're very nicely packed together, yeah, all four of them, uh, which is probably because of the Hurricane's thicker wing which allowed this placement. Uh, whereas on the Spitfire, the Spitfire has a much thinner wing, so space is much more of an issue there. Uh, 109 uh, did a sneaky, cheeky shot there, and he's now going defensive. Dive, trying to dive away now coming back to turn trying to turn here at the edge of uh, blackout just trying not to uh, blackout so entirely because that would be pretty much catastrophic I set on fire one of his elevators which should reduce his ability to pull uh, very hard now settled in behind him but we are not done yet. Um, ever find that that was so yeah, the, the, the soft stats of the Hurricane. So, yeah, Hurricane is m a much nicer handling aircraft, also at slow speeds. Um, if you get very slow in the Spitfire, especially if you try to prop hang this thing, and here you see a nice deflection shot on the 9 again bypassing the armored bulkhead and he's a torch. So, yeah, I cannot stress this enough. I always try to get um, a good deflection shot in on the 109s and you shouldn't have a problem setting them on fire. And coming back to the Hurricane and Spitfire comparison, so the um, Spitfire, when you get it very slow or try to prop hang the thing, it feels like a wet towel. It gets very unresponsive, especially in the ailerons. Uh, whereas the Hurricane, you can really it's very uh, controllable at slow speeds. You can prop hang much better than in the Spitfire. So um, when you're fighting against a hurricane and you see him nose up, don't assume that he cannot take a shot because he probably can if he's close enough. I've, uh, I've set my fair share of 109s on fire in the hurricane who thought they uh, they can just power climb over me and I just nosed up, give them a good spray and they were torches. And you know, all of this is things that you cannot deduct from the raw performance statistics of the two aircraft. So Spitfire is definitely faster and the better climbing aircraft no doubt. 
but the hurricane has its own advantages elsewhere that cannot be uh, simply deducted from the performance trials of these two aircraft. So, um, as the server was emptying at this point, I uh, decided to land, not uh, do any more flying. Um, we were down to 15 people on the server, so I went ahead and landed in the nearest um, airbase um, in my hurricane. And that was it for today, so I hope you enjoyed this video and the commentary and I will definitely do, do more commentary um, for the next event mission. The next one is going to be an ANZAC event. Um, unfortunately, that's going to take place in the middle of the night, so I'm very likely not going to take part in that one. But hopefully there's going to be more after that, and I'll see you in one of those, those future videos then.